Hello, I'm Jonathan Stark, and in this video, I'm going to attempt to show you how to deploy uh, private GitHub repos automatically to your web server. I'm starting from scratch with a, a fresh GitHub account and a fresh LAMP server, or sorry, Ubuntu server with a LAMP stack installed on it. Uh, so I won't be making too many assumptions about your particular setup, and if I stumble along the way, uh, hopefully you'll learn from my troubles and how I decide to debug it. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, I've got this GitHub account here called Screencast, and it's, it's basically brand new. And I've got a uh, an Ubuntu server with a LAMP stack installed on it called Test that I created with DigitalOcean. It doesn't matter where you create yours, uh, as long as you just have a, a web server. Um, all right, so let me, I've got sort of a blog post going here that I'll link to in the in the notes. Uh, the first thing you want to do is SSH into the server. SSH is short for Secure Shell, and the, if you're not familiar with it, the syntax is um, SSH space username at IP address or domain name, whatever your host spec is. So if I paste that in, uh, I'm going to SSH as root into this machine. It's going to ask me for a password. And this information was provided to me by... Uh, DigitalOcean. If you don't have this information, you'll need to get it from your provider. Some providers don't allow SSH access. If you don't have that uh, capability, then you won't be able to do this. Um, all right. So what I want to do is uh, cd into my Apache directory, my web root. And right now there's nothing in there. So if I go to that IP address, I should get an error or something. Empty directory. Okay, cool. So uh, my web server's running. There's nothing in the directory that's to be expected. And I think we're ready to go. All right, so what I'm going to do is how do I, I'll, I'll do this the way I usually do it. Uh, usually what I do is I'm in my server and I start dorking around, create some files, uh, and then I decide, you know what, I should put this under uh, version control, and then I uh, add it to git. I won't make a big deal about this. Let's just do uh, git init in this directory. Cool, and I'm gonna create a file. Touch index, you could do this with FTP or whatever, it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to edit that file with a nano editor, just so I'm not jumping around between applications too much. And Command O to write it out, and X to get out of the editor. So now if I go to refresh that, now I'm getting uh, I've got an index page in that directory. So if I do git status, you can see I've got untracked files. I need to add them so that Git starts tracking them because you don't necessarily want Git to track everything. Git add everything in this directory and then Git commit message issue commit. And then Git status. All right, on branch master, nothing to commit, working directory clean. But that's, so now I've got uh, sort of a Git repo going locally on this machine. I want to um, push that up to GitHub so other people could clone it down from GitHub. So I'll make a new repo. And it's going to be a private repo because that's the whole point. Public is kind of easy to set up automatic deployment, but private is the tricky part. So we're going to create that repo, and then it'll give me a message about how to push an existing repository from the command line. And here is a pro tip. You want to make sure you've got SSH selected here, not HTTP. If you use HTTP, it's going to keep asking you for a username and password on the server side, and you can never set up something automated because you won't be there to fill out that information. So you want to do SSH like that. All right, so let's, let's let the server know about this new repo on GitHub. 
git remote add origin. All right. And then git push base minus u origin master. All right, so you're going to get this um, authenticity thing. So this is normal the first time that the, the two servers, the GitHub server and your web server, know about each other. Uh, so it, it's since it's normal, it's okay to hit yes. And it will add the information to, it'll add that server information to the list of known hosts. Uh, so it won't ask you that information again. If it does ask you that information again, it could mean that someone's spoofing GitHub's uh, domain name and there could be a problem so you want to be um, alert to that fact. You can see here I'm getting a permission denied public key uh, and that the remote end hung up unexpectedly. That's because it th that repo that I tried to push to just now is private and I didn't provide any authentication information to prove that it's me trying to push to that repo. So that is what we have to do next and to do that we need to set up SSH keys. This is pretty arcane and can be scary, but it's really not that many steps. So I'll try and explain it as I go through. There's really no no way around it. And, uh, and you kind of have to do this anyway to set up Git. It has nothing to do with automatic deployment. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go over to help to show you the page. Uh, SSH keys. They've got a great page. We're just going to follow these instructions for generating SSH keys. This is a great uh, uh, instruction set. I'm going to select Linux. They're all basically the same. So, uh, and this information is also in um, the blog post. First, I'm going to look and see if I have any SSH keys. I might, I might, depending on your setup. So I'm going to CD into my home directory, which uh, the shortcut for that is tilde on Linux. In my case, it's... Uh, slash root, but yours will probably be different. If I look in here, I see an SSH directory. And depending on how much you've messed around with your server, there may or may not be anything in here. Um, uh, okay, so known host is actually that file that was created based on this interaction up here where I was um, asked to add it to the list of known hosts. So now in the future it won't ask me because now that fingerprint is a known host. Anyway, that's tangential information. What I want to do is create public private keys. So the public and private keys are pretty weird. Here's the general concept. Um, what I'm going to do is generate two files. One is public and I can share it with anyone. I can put it on my website for people to download. I can email it around. It's no big deal. I don't have to keep it private. The other file, the private key is the one that I need to keep private. And what happens is people can use your public key to encrypt messages that only you can decrypt using your private key. And to this day, the naming of these things really bothers me. So I'm going to give you a quick analogy. Uh, let's say I wanted to, um, I wanted to uh, send a private message to my brother, the snail mail. So I've got a, I've got a letter. I want to make sure it's private. I want to make sure that nobody... Uh, you know, the mailman can't just open up the, the letter and read it and then deliver it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send an open padlock to my brother. So I mail an open padlock to my brother. So he's got my padlock. And he, so then he writes the letter. He puts it inside of a metal box and locks the box with my padlock. Now he can't even open it. And he puts my address on the box. And he sends the box back to me via the mail. And the mailman can't open it because he doesn't have a key. And then when I get it, I can unlock the padlock with my physical key. And that's kind of the analogy. So the public key that you share with people is the padlock that is not sensitive. Uh, anybody can have it. And they can, lock, they can encrypt things or lock things inside of a box with it. But then you're the one that's got the physical key or the what's called the private key in the crypto world. And you can use it, that. So hopefully, I don't know, maybe that was lame. But that's the analogy that I use to keep it straight. Anyway, so uh, we need to generate a public key or the padlock. And we need to generate a private key that we keep secure. And the instructions to do so are right here. It's pretty straightforward. It, 
it looks really cryptic, but it's not hard. You just copy this and paste it. And I'm going to use screencast at like that. And it's going to ask you some things. So first it's going to say, uh, you know, if you, oh, by the way, if you already have some files in here called ID underscore RSA and ID underscore RSA dot pub, you, don't, you can skip these steps and just fast forward. Uh, but if you don't have those, you're going to follow these instructions. So I'm just going to hit enter here to use the default file name. I'm going to, now it's asking me for a passphrase and normally I would put one in here, but we're not going to do it in this case because we want this key to be used by the, the like a robot. Like this machine is going to do things on my behalf and I'm not going to be there to type in a passphrase. So I'm just going to leave it empty. And that is a little bit of a security violation because if somebody gets into this machine, then they will be able to, uh, you know, log into my GitHub account and do stuff from the command line. Uh, so I have to make sure that basically I keep my server secure and I have to make sure that I keep that, um, that public, uh, sorry, that private key secure. So it's a little, it's very convenient. It's a little bit of a security issue, but the good news is that I can delete that key from my GitHub account. So I, I'm not going to use it for anything else. I'm just going to use it for accessing my GitHub account. And, uh, if, um, uh, if I need to, I can delete that and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So now I've created this key. Now, if we look at the directory again, I've got two new files, ID underscore RSA and ID underscore RSA dot pub. Dot pub is the public one. And I want the contents of that file. I need the I need what's in there to paste it into GitHub. So let me go over to GitHub first. And in my account settings, I can add an SSH key. Click add SSH key. I'm going to call this GitHub robot on test server. And here it's expecting a long gobbledygook string, which I can read by using the cat command at the command line. rsa.pub that just outputs the contents of a file to the command line. So I'm going to carefully copy the entire thing. And paste it in here. And a couple, I'm going to make a couple comments here before I finish this. Um, the uh, email address that I provided when I ran the RSA uh, key generation command gets tacked onto the end of the public key here. And that's just helpful for me. So like later on, if I look at this giant string, I know which account it corresponds to. I could have called it robot or something like that. That might've been a little better. So that's just a helpful little string. I think I can leave this line return at the end, uh, but, but we'll see if it gives me an error. All right, cool. So now I've got this key added. GitHub's going to email me. It's going to, oh, you can hear it buzzing in the background. It's going to email me and tell me that a new SSH key was added to my account. So if you ever get an email like that and you didn't add a key, then you mean someone's hacking you. So watch out for that. So now that I've got that uh, key set up there, uh, oh, one more thing to mention. If you do have RSA keys already on your local machine and you want to copy them up to your web server instead of generating them, I probably recommend against that because you're not going to be using a passphrase. Uh, but if you do move these around or whatever, you want to make sure that the permissions are set as you see here. Um, they can't, SSH will not work if the permissions are not uh, properly secure. So if you do have errors, that could be from that. All right, I think I'm all set now to retry my push. Let's clear this mess. Go back through and see if I can do my git push u origin master. Uh, oh, I'm in the wrong directory, sorry. CD R dub status. All right, now if I commit, directory clean. Ta da! So now what happened is when I ran the git push command, it was able to SSH into the machine because, you know, it, it pinged that uh, origin that I had added before. So it looked at the URL, the git URL for this repo. It said, uh, Hey, who is this dude? Is Does this dude have the private key that we are expecting? So it uh, encrypts a message, it sends it back down, the machine automatic, the server automatically uses my private key to decode it, and GitHub says, yep, this, this person at least has the private key that it goes with this account, so we can allow them to edit things. 
All right, fabulous. So now I'm in a situation where the server can talk to GitHub. All right, so if I go back to my repos. <laughs> that was weird. Now the index file is here. So this was an empty repo before. Now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I can pull. So I'm going to edit this file locally on GitHub. Come on. All right, edit it on GitHub. Normally, I normally you're gonna clone this locally, make your changes locally, push them to GitHub, but I'm just gonna do this here to keep it simple. And now, if I go back to the terminal and I do a git pull, pulls it down. If you get an error here, try doing git pull. Uh, origin master instead. Sometimes I have to do that, but this time it just worked. All right, so now we know git pull works. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set up a cron job to git pull on my behalf. So what cron is, cron is a process that runs on the server every minute. It wakes up and it checks a configuration file to see if uh, it needs to do anything. And you put uh, commands in there that uh, indicate at, at which time certain commands need to run. Uh, you can Google for cron tab uh, or just cron, Unix cron, and get tons and tons of information about how to use cron. Uh, if I do this, get rid of that. When I get in here, uh, you might have there might be a bunch of gobbledygook. If this is the first time you've done this, uh, it might ask you to set up uh, a default editor. In this case, I'm using Nano, which is I think the easiest for people who are not familiar with command line editors. Uh, so if if it gives you the option to pick Nano, then do so. Uh, otherwise, use whatever default editor you prefer, like Emacs or Vim or whatever. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell I'm going to give this a command to run every minute. And that command is here. And what this is saying is, uh, well, so the first five uh, columns really is what they are. The first five entries here or characters here are asterisks, which mean uh, they represent time segments like hours, minutes, days, weeks, months. Uh, and what I'm saying here is like every single hour of every, every minute of every hour of every day of every week of every month, run this command, or it's really two commands. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to, when the, the cron job runs, it's going to say, okay, I want to change directory into the, in this case, the web root. And these two ands, they're not really an and, it's really uh, what this these two characters mean is, assuming that that previous command exits successfully, then run this next command. So cd into the git repo directory and then run a git pull. And this cron tab is going to run under the permissions of the person who created it. And as we have already demonstrated, I have permission to access GitHub when I'm logged and when I'm SSH into the server as myself. Uh, okay, so I'm going to hit Control O and hit Enter to save that, and then Control X to quit out. So now what happens is every minute. Uh, cron is going to cd into that directory and it's going to do a git pull. This could be weird if I was working in that directory because I could be working do, 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 and then it runs a git pull and something bizarre will happen. So you really shouldn't be working in your web server directory anymore. Um, all right, so now if I go to, let's pull up a couple of things here. First, let's go back to my web. This is my website. And you can see that edited on GitHub is sitting there. This is my page, my index page. I'm going to edit this and say, um, let's see, uh, updated or pulled by Quran. Let's 
save that. So now if the cron job works in the command, if I entered it properly, uh, within a minute, cron will wake up, it will run those two commands, and, uh, oh, it already happened. So now, ta-da. All right, so I'm gonna leave it at that for now, but I will point out that now my web server is gonna be pulling from, uh, from GitHub every minute, uh, which I don't imagine is gonna annoy the GitHub folks, but it's not super slick. There's a more complicated version of this that uh, I use normally where um, I use GitHub webhooks to create a temp file on the server. And my cron job, instead of just automatically pulling from GitHub, it sees it checks to see if a temp file exists. And if it does exist, then it does a pull and removes the temp file. What that means is uh, I know that nothing is going to get pulled onto my server unless someone actually pushes to GitHub. And I'll actually do that in a second video. I think this is probably enough for to get people started. So I hope that helps. Talk to you later.